All right, so in this video, I'm gonna show you how I usually add checkboxes and assign those checkboxes to cells using a macro. And before, I remember I would always just click on the um, properties of the checkbox and always assign it to the cell manually, but it, it seemed to take up a lot of time. So, Recently, I've developed a lot of uh, quality documents that required dozens of checkboxes. So it's it's a good solution if you need to assign a lot of checkboxes or if you need to change the cell in which checkboxes are assigned to. So let me show you. I'm doing this on... Um, Excel for Mac as well, so it's going to be a little different from Windows. So to get, you need the Developer tab to add checkboxes. To get to that, you must go to Excel, Preferences, Ribbon and Toolbars, and make sure that this is checked so that you get these extra features. So to add a checkbox, I'm just going to click that. I'm going to click in this cell. Usually, my preference, I never use the this tag that comes with the checkbox. And I will shrink it down to get it into the cell that I want it. There it works. I'm going to center it a little better. So yeah, the code, to add a code to, and since I usually have a lot of checkboxes, I usually make the true or false statement appear in the same cell as the checkbox. So I have to start a new module. To start a new module, I'll go to Visual Basic, Insert Module. And with this code here, um, with columns set to zero and rows set to zero, the the result or the true or false statement that results from the checkbox should appear in the same cell as the checkbox. So let's run this and see what happens. So run. There we go. True, false, true, false. And So let me show you how much time this will save if you have a lot of these. There we go. So we're going to run this. There we go. They're all set to false. And yeah, so if you need these to be well, you might have one column, and you might want the result to appear in this column. In that case, you would just, let me see, yeah, you would just add one to the column, and it will move the result to the right. If you add a negative one, negative two, negative three, it will, it will put the result to the left. Same with rows, it works the same way. If you, Every one that you add, every increment that you add, it will take the result down a row, and then it'll happen in the opposite way if you, if you add negative numbers. So negative one, negative two, negative three will just cause that result to go up uh, from, your, from whatever cell the, the result is in when it's zero, zero. So, let me go back. So this is nice. Another thing that's nice to know if yeah, if you have these in the cell, you don't want them to be seen, then you can yeah, go to conditional formatting and I'm just going to go to a, a highlight cells rule. So equal to
true. Do a custom. So where's my text? There we go. Took me a while. Okay. Actually, let me put false. And you can do the same with true as well. So I, I put the text format as white. So none of these should show up. Okay, here we go. And you could do the same with uh, when it's true. Another thing is if when I was auditing, I would use each column for a person. And then uh, for the process that I was auditing, I had them listed here. And to come up with percentages, you know, I would just tally up how many were true or how many were false. It just kind of depended on the situation. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So if I wanted to count, you know, the proportion of trues out of 14, then I could just use the count, count if in this range. Criteria Okay, so there's two of them um, So then two out of how many? Out of 14 There we go, and then I'll just add a percentage and that's just a cool way to you know kind of tally up your results. Yeah, and I could actually put another. Let's see if it's equal to true. Then I want to make the text white. Okay. Cool. So I hope that helped. And then, like I said, the code that I use is, uh, it should be in the description below. Oh, actually, one other thing before I leave, if you need to wipe these out, like I just hit the delete button and couldn't delete those. If for some reason you need to erase your checkboxes, uh, one thing you could do is I'll go to find and select go to special and then select objects and it will select all the object not only the checkboxes it will actually select all the objects but if all you have is checkboxes and you want to delete them all you can use this method hit the delete button and kind of reset from there